like <laughs> does it every time. Try it again. <laughs> Good evening. I'd like to open the May 23rd, 2023 Bethel Planning and Zoning meeting. Uh, and I'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic of its past, one nation under God, divisible with liberty and justice. And then let's have the commissioners introduce themselves. Bob, you want to start? Bob Legnar, Commissioner. Mr. Cooney? Douglas Cooney, alternate. Ken Parsons. Kenny Kessler. Ken Stevens. Kitty Grant. Rob Wallace, alternate. Beth Cavagna, Planning Director. Nancy Lobaldo, Reporting Secretary. Thank you. Dave oh, McCollum, Land Use Coordinator. Thank you very much. And for the record, I'd like to, I'm sorry. Welcome, Nancy, back. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yes. And sure, sure. just for the record, I'd like to read our use of personal electronic devices policy. Please note that the record, for the record, that any personal electronic devices used by commission members is for the purpose of reviewing materials located in the Google Drive on the town's website. First item on the agenda is public hearings, and the first one is for JR, JAR Associates. Site plan, special permit, um, excavation at 185 Grassy Plain Street. And Kitty will read the public notice into the record, please. To appear May 12th and May 19th, 2023, public notice. The Bethel Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on May 23rd, 2023, in conference room D of the Municipal Center, 1 School Street, Bethel, Connecticut, to hear the following. JAR Associates for property located at 185 Grassy Plain Street, for a site plan, a special permit to construct, is it 175,000? 70, 70. Oh, it's one, I'm sorry. It's one 75,000 square foot and 15,000 square foot building and associated amenities in the IP zone. The property can be found in the assessor's record as map 10, block 23 and lot 51. A link to review the materials can be found on the town's website. The public may send comments via regular mail and email to landuse at bethelct.gov. Parking for hearing is located in the rear of the building. Ken Stevens, Chairman. Good evening. Uh, Peter Olson for the applicant, JAR Associates. We requested that the commission table this matter to the next meeting. Um, we've had some exchange of engineering comments and resubmission. But mostly, um, we have an NDDB hit for this property for the Metal Mark Butterfly. And we've been trying to identify an expert to come tell us whether we have any habitat for the butterfly, pre-construction and post-construction, if there's anything we can do to encourage the butterfly to continue its existence in the area. Um, I think we found somebody. Um, he may be too busy, and we're, we're working on it. This is not exactly a field with an enormous number of choices as to people who can help. Um, so still working on that. We'd like to come back at your meeting of June 13th, and maybe we'll have some things resolved by then. I do have a copy of the notice for this public hearing that was sent out, as well as the green cards that I received back. Mm -hmm. And just to get that for the record. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, if you just want to continue the yeah. meeting. So we'll continue so. this hearing for JAR Associates to our meeting of June the 13th, 2023. Next item on the agenda is 22-24 Nashville Road, LLC. And I apologize, Illarina Pomazi. Um, zone change from R10 to Village Center with TD, TOD overlay, 22 to 24 Nashville Road. To appear May 12th and May 19th, 2023, public notice. The Bethel Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on May 23rd. 2023 in conference room D of the Municipal Center, Wind School Street, Bethel, Connecticut, to hear the following. 22 Nashville Road, LLC, Illarina Palmazi, for property located at 2224 Nashville Road for a map amendment to change the present zoning from R10 to Village Center with the TOD overlay zone to combine lots for development purposes. The property can be found in the assessor's records as map 31, block 49, 
and lots 060 and 061. A link to review the materials can be found on the town's website. The public may send comments via regular, excuse me, regular mail and email to landuse at bethelpt.gov. Parking for the hearing is located to the rear of the building and Stephen's chair. Right. For the applicant. All right. Good evening. My name is Peter Olson. My firm name is Land Use and Conservation Council. Address is 275 Greenwood Avenue. I'm here tonight on behalf of 22 National Road LLC and Ilarina Pamazi, who is a principal of the LLC. The property in question is 22 to 24 National Road. Uh, Mr. Pamazi is supposed to be here tonight. I don't know if I can walk in. So maybe he'll come as we're working through this. Um, David, can you share the um share the screen and call up the document titled presentation that's in the google drive excuse me i will bring that up shortly uh shortly there attorney oh come on up. <laughs> thank you uh while david does that i'd like to submit for the record a copy of the notice of the public hearing as well as the green cards that i've received back which are numerous but not all Good, that's it, thank you. You're welcome. So as I said, the property is located at 22 to 24 National Road. These are two parcels of land consisting of 0.23 and 0.233 acres of land respectively for a combined total of 0.463 acres or just over 20,000 square feet. The property is currently in the R10 zoning district. The first page of the presentation that I have David to call up is the Google Street View. And essentially, we're standing on National Road, and you can see this is 22 National Road principally with the trucks and the metal building, and then 24 is the house on the adjacent parcel of land. The properties are improved with the metal garage that you can see there, currently used basically as a contractor yard and a single family home. The request is to change the zoning district for this property to Village Center with a TOD overlay. This small corridor on Nashville Road, running from the intersection of Nashville and Chestnut, has really always been commercial in nature, and we think it's appropriate for the Village Center with TOD overlay zoning designation. Uh, some context for the area. Um, to the left here of, of this view that you're seeing is Jim McNichols' contractor yard, the former Grassy Plain Fife and Drum building. And there's two buildings uh, essentially in that project. It's, it's, um residential now. I don't know what the zoning is, but it's there's no contractors. Oh, okay. Well, I, I didn't know that, but um, but it was commercial it was for, for, for a long time. And then there's a green building that is half residential and half commercial, the former Whaley's Flower Bowl building. Um, it's now a spa, and I think somebody else just reopened um, within the last week or so. Mm -hmm. So uh, across the street um, on the north side of South Street is the former center school. Now apartments, obviously, and on the south side of South Street it is a multifamily development. I think it's got four units in it. To the rear of the property um, are single-family homes on Chestnut Street, on this side of Chestnut Street, which is the west side. Um, but there is a significant grade change between these properties and Chestnut Street being much higher. And then Chestnut Village is diagonally across the street on um, on South Street on Chestnut Street. So there are many multifamily developments that essentially surround the property. Uh, David, can you move down one page? This is the Town of Bethel zoning map. Um, I'm gonna hand out a excerpt from it and I would appreciate David if you can zoom in on the intersection of Greenwood Avenue and Chestnut Street slash Nashville. <laughs> So what I'm handing out is simply a zoom in version of that map, which I think David is getting. And it's extra if anybody from the audience is sure. mm -hmm. This is as far as I can zoom in, Attorney Olson. Okay, that's fine. So um, this zoning map is taken from the POCD. Um, it doesn't say official zoning map on it like those do. And it doesn't have a date on it. 
but the file name of this says zoning map 10-21. So I'm assuming this is the most recent version of the zoning map of the town. The red is the village center. The legend on this map actually calls it commercial, but that's not the case anymore. It's all village center. And as relevant to this, which you can see on the extreme zoom that I handed out, the two properties that are located just to the north of the properties that are subject to this application are zoned village center. Chestnut Village, just a little bit across the street, is zoned village center. Bethel Food Market, which are the three parcels on the corners, or the other three in the large piece. Uh, their, you know, their second building with the liquor store is, are all village center. On the end of South Street, or uh, this end of South Street, the pink indicates RMO. So center school is RMO, and this multifamily development is RMO. The orange is R10, which is what ours is currently zoned. David, can you slide down one page? This one, you're going to have to zoom out a bit. This is the transit oriented development zone, overlay zone map. This is actually the same map that's hanging on the wall outside this room. Um, and if we can zoom in on the bottom right corner, <clears throat> what we can see is that the center school property is in the TOD. The two properties directly adjacent to properties subject to this application are in the TOD. Um, a portion of the Chestnut Village properties in TOD, as is the, the two parcels on the corner there. So current zoning, we touch the VC and the TOD. And we believe that this makes, this is a logical extension of that zoning a little bit further down Nashville Road to accommodate the commercial type use that has been there um, for many years. Oops, sorry, my screen rotated. Um, in addition, the elimination of that commercial industrial use, um, as I'll get to, our intention is to build a multifamily housing development, um, as well as putting that property into a zone, which allows it to so either way, will be the elimination of essentially a non-conforming use. The R10 doesn't allow that type of use, which is a general goal of planning and zoning. This zoning designation change will allow my client to redevelop the property for an exclusively residential use, eliminating that contractor yard that's currently on the property. And we think that will provide an overall benefit to the downtown area. But of course that comes at a cost to remove something that's currently there and viable. And so the increased density that this request will allow will facilitate that replacement. So I believe these properties, or at least 22 Nashville at least, um, provided an edge case for the original TOD that probably they could have been included in that uh, original boundary and, and that would have been a justified choice. So what is TOD or v, the VC? Both. VC is the underlying zone. TOD. VC is the underlying zone and then TOD it would be the overlay on top of it. So rather than it being a TOD overlaid, oh, I'm sorry. overlaid on R10 it would be TOD overlaid on village centers. Okay thank you. Um, next page, please, David. Um, this is the survey that was included with the application that shows our properties here, the 100 foot radius and the 500 foot radius for which we have to give notice to 500 feet for its own changes. Um, one more page, please, David. I did a Google Maps walking distance analysis to the train station, and we are within one mile walking, uh, 0.9. It did suggest that you walk up to Chestnut Street, which I think would be kind of a challenge. Um, that, so it would be essentially Nashville um, and then down Greenwood. Uh, so within one mile of the train station, which we think makes it appropriate for a TOD development. We've not developed detailed civil engineering drawings because we wanted to see how this went first, pending your review and decision on this application, we would get to work on that. But our architect has been hard at work and created a conceptual drawing of the type of development that we're looking to do on this property. And I'll just show it to you quickly on the last page of this, David, if you can scroll down. So we're looking for essentially a two-story building with some loft areas. Um, 
this proposal would be 12 units total, six on each floor, eight two bedrooms and four one bedrooms total. Um, but as I said, we've, we've not done the civil engineering for this yet. So this is just a conceptual idea of what we're looking for. So for these reasons, we submit that this request is a reasonable and logical extension that's in accordance with the comprehensive plan found on the ground in the town of Bethel, um, as found in the uses um, that we see there today. So with that, we have nothing further. We're happy to answer any questions that you have. What happens to the house that's there? Well, this in, includes both parcels of land, so the house would be removed. This time I'll open the floor to the public. Please remember to step up where you can be seen on the camera and state your name and your address to address the comments or questions to the commission. Um, and when all questions have been heard, get one more picture of that. Hi, I'm John Speck, 26 National Road, the adjoining property. Um, lived there, single family, 24 years. I raised my children in that house. Um, a little history uh, because we're being told that it's been operated as a commercial property. Uh, 24 in Nashville was owned by Ella Carrick, who was a fixture in this town for probably 100 years. She, uh, she lived to be 90 years old. She walked to the market every day. She um, raised her family in that house. Her daughter attended Plum Tree School for kindergarten, um, passed away uh, three days after leaving the house at 92, I think. Uh, was there just long enough to greet my children into the world. Um, After she passed, the house went on the market. It was sold to a lovely young couple who raised their family there until they outgrew the house. It's been a staple in our community. Um, it would be a shame to lose the house or the property. Uh, it definitely needs single family homes like this. She, um, the family that lived there outgrew this house and stayed in Bethel. I'm concerned that with 20, with 12 rental units in there, you'll find more of a transient population that doesn't stay in Bethel, that isn't committed to the town. Um, when I say committed to the town, let me explain that my wife has gone on to become, after raising our children, giving up her career, raising our children, she's gone on to become an emergency medical responder, uh, which she can do from our house during COVID when, EMS people and EMTs and fire responders were not allowed to stay at the firehouse. Uh, and many of them had restrictions that permitted, prevented them from taking calls during COVID. She took three or four calls at night or literally 200 yards from the firehouse. This made it possible for her to respond from home instead of staying at the firehouse, which was, which was not permitted. Uh, she literally kept the town alive through COVID. And um, I would like to speak to keep the town alive now. I think it would be a travesty to lose this single family home. Um, we, we're making a large investment in staying in our home. We're investing way more than we expect to get out of our house at that residence because we plan to stay. Um, we think that a single family home there will provide more families that plan to stay after they raise their children and contribute to the tax base long after they've been a burden on the schools and the tax uh, expenses. Um, we hope that maybe one day our children will return to town. Uh, we're concerned about the way things are going in town many, many multi-unit houses, particularly in that part of town. Uh, the old Birdie building, right across the street from the old Birdie building. The building's right across the street from Town Hall here. Um, we're terribly concerned about the overdevelopment downtown. 
Um, I spoke of the Kinnises who lived next door to us for several years and raised their children until they outgrew the house. Twins will do that to you. Uh, they, um, they sold to a young couple, doctors who seemed like a natural fit, kind of carry on the tradition of the neighborhood. But those people started using it as an Airbnb and didn't stay and uh, had to leave, sell the loss at a house to the man petitioning here today. Um, since that time, he's had tenants in there. Uh, the upkeep of the building has deteriorated. Although I, I have to say he has uh, continued to maintain the paint and maintain the yard to some extent. Um, but it's just not the same. Right within weeks of him purchasing the property, he moved the line of the fence from his metal shop next door. He moved it at least seven feet into the residential property, make room for a storage container for his business. Um, since then, his tenants have operated a landscaping business out of the driveway. We've submitted online and I have with me on my phone photos of uh, dismantled trucks, a, a, a storage container, landscaping equipment all over the driveway, cars parked on the front lawn and the back. Um, I, I'm terribly afraid that if this business moves up the street and it's zoned commercial or in any way changed, the zoning has changed from single family, that this trend will continue. I'm very, very scared that this property will, um, will honestly be owned by somebody who doesn't have a vested stake in the town or my neighborhood. Um, I, and I, I wouldn't say it if I haven't already seen it since he took possession of the property. Um, as I say, our family is committed to town government, and <clears throat> boards. Uh, we're committed to saving the lives of the people in the town as volunteer EMTs. And my wife would be here tonight, except she's in paramedic school so that she can take her care for the people of Bethel one step farther. Um, it really, it's scary. It's a very scary proposition to have a large multifamily complex going in right next to our house, to have this, this property line extended from the commercial venture into our practically into our driveway, honestly. It's um, so that pretty much concludes my comments. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you spell your last name for me? S P E C H T. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Patrick Wild, 31 Nashville Road Extension. I'm concerned about this property for several reasons. I'm somewhat of a neighbor. I live on Nashville Road Extension. Um, I also serve as the town historian. And 24 Nashville Road is an historic building. The earliest map we have showing that portion of downtown dates to 1856. That building was there in 1856 and before. 24 and 26 National Road were basically twin buildings at the outset. Their it's, appearances. Excuse me, one minute, Patrick. I think it would be helpful if um, Attorney Olson put up Google View. You put uh, a link up there for Google View. And David, if you can listen as he's talking, David, could you bring that up so the commission can get a visual as you're? talking about the two structures, if that isn't an inconvenience to no, you. No. It's page one of the presentation I submitted, David. Very good, Attorney Olson. I will do my best to follow. Uh, can, every, can everyone see my screen? Yes. yes. 
Can you move it and go up to the next? Oh, he can't move. It. No. So, so I, so what I, what I will do is I will go into Google Maps and um, try to share um, what the. Um, Google Earth. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, no, you're quite right. Quite right. right. At the, um, I think it's good for clarification. Access. David, could you do that for us? Thank you. I, I'm I'm working on that as we speak. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, go up one, please. I believe Patrick, you're talking. Yes. You want to speak about the residential? I just wanted to point area. out that these two buildings, when they started off, were identical. And you can see the changes that have been made. But if you use your imagination and you take the attic window, for example, in the building on the right and transfer it to the house on the left. The building uh, on the right has a much nicer coat of paint. <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, I feel they are historic structures. Uh, this is a 2012 image. I went on the same uh, Google website before I came to the meeting just to get things straight. So this uh, this image is now 11 years old. Unfortunately, that's the most recent one that they have up at this point in time. But as you can see, this is not a dilapidated house that's about to fall down. Um, it's been there a long time. I feel it should be there uh, a lot longer. The other reason I'm very much concerned, and I'm sure a lot of people are here knowing the same thing, and many of the members of the board know this as well, if you visit this spot in Bethel on any weekday, Monday through Friday, between 3 p.m. and let's say 6.30 p.m., traffic is at a complete standstill. It is all the way up Nashville Road. It's all the way up South Street. It's backed up Hill Chestnut. It's just a total disaster. And to put a large structure here. It's going to have a lot of people coming and going from that particular spot right across the street. This is directly across the street from the end of South Street. It's it's not a good picture, all right? If you want to kind of imagine how it would even get worse with this uh, project moving forward. So again, I'm very concerned and you're being asked to make a change and I know you know that, but you're not required to make a change. Um, speaking for myself, again, as a somewhat neighbor and town historian, I would like to see that historic structure safe. Thank you very much. Patrick, I have questions for you, sure. if you don't mind. I don't sure. know paying for the rent, but since we have this up, it's really for identification purposes. The house next to, um, is it 24? Could you zoom in on that house too, please? at the next house. Yes, that one right there to your left, David, or my left, excuse me, this right there. Is there a plaque on that house? Yes. Nope. And can you just speak to that a little bit? That might be a little early. <laughs> All right. Uh, and that, that plaque came with the house, it's in 1810. Okay, but I I've believe heard, it was 1860. I've, I've heard 1810, I've heard 1848, honestly. Okay. That, Better okay, but the point of my question is that's a house that historically was built before 1900. It was built, I can I can tell you it was there in 1856. Someone is speaking on there. Could you make sure everyone is muted, please? Yes. When we redid our bathroom the first time, we found in the uh, wall of a newspaper, and uh, it was actually a a firearms catalog on newsprint from 1848, I believe it was. Okay. All right, and then from that point, can you go to the next house? <clears throat> I think it's important for the commission to have visuals. The next one up. Patrick, are either one of these on the National Historic Register? No, no, no. That takes a lot of doing. <laughs> okay, so the next one, show that. That's a single family home. Go across the street. 
I, uh, I believe that could be a two family home and that's based on my age. <laughs> we can discuss that later, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, and then if you go to the corner, that's in the RMO zone. And I believe that's more than, um, that's uh, La Salva. I believe there's four units in there. Um, it's in the RMO zone. And um, I think that's a little bit over half an acre, three quarters of an acre, if I'm correct. Okay, thank you. Patrick, did you have anything else? You no, but to? Uh, we just got a nice shot of the trouble area that I was talking about in terms of the traffic. That intersection, there is no light. And people trying to merge into one lane in order to get to Chestnut, it's, it's just a really bad situation. I've lived in Bethel now for 63 years, and I would nominate it for the worst traffic spot in Bethel at the present time. <laughs> Any other questions? No, I really wanted to focus on the historic yes, there are historian of part of it with you. And as far as the adjacent properties, heading more towards the residential areas. The uh, old building that used to be the Whaling Flower Bowl, prior to that, it was a, a cider mill located in that exact same spot. It was a wooden structure. They took it down, and they basically put one on the same footprint as before. You There's know, also a little small brick building nearby that was which, a storage building for a hat factory. Can you go to that? Because the applicant, again, this is all to familiarize the neighbor, the um, commission with the neighborhood. That particular brick building was converted to, I want to say, a studio apartment. And it did come out very nice. <laughs> From what I have been able to find, there used to be a hat factory there, and yeah. there were so many hat factories in Buffalo. And that was a storage area after they had yes, the, the hats finished. They put them in the brick building. So many of those little hat factories used to burn down. And they mm -hmm. said, hey, we want to make sure these hats don't <laughs> burn up. Let's put them in a brick building. Mm -hmm. And so that was the purpose of that. And to the right, the old grassy plain drum corps building. That's right. Prior mm -hmm. to being the drum corps building, it was the alert hose company number mm -hmm. three. That was Bethel's second firehouse. Fire the first one was on Main Street. Mm -hmm. This one was built around 1872. So that even though it's undergone an exterior change that also is a historic building. That that building itself now contains three residential units. Four there. Four. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Hi, Allison St. Germain, 14 Algen Ave. Um, I think what we're hearing here again is the TOD. And I know that there are conversations happening right now about what to do with the TOD. And I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's a property that's right next to those zones that they're asking for. So it makes complete sense. However, I do challenge that it really is in walking distance to the train station. As you all know, as someone who runs, today was day 1,234, so one, two, three, four. I went that way because I wanted to see, well, where, what are we dealing with again tonight? You have no sidewalks on that side of the street. The only sidewalk that you have is in front of Center Street School. And God love you if you're running the firecracker race and thank God there's no cars that day, you can't run down Nashville Road. You can't, you can't go past that corner. So it is right next to the TOD in the Village Center. It definitely is, but it really, when you start extending that back, it, it does not fit. So I think what we're definitely seeing here is that there is a need to develop and to add to add residences. And like uh, Attorney Olson said, increase density. So 12 units, I hear eight two bedrooms. I immediately think more children in the schools because we've heard you can't really have children in a one bedroom, but definitely in a two bedroom. Um, so again, those are all things that have been consistent themes over the past 12 months. And so until this commission takes some action on some of the things that are talking and have been talked about, you really might need to consider the TOD moratorium to pause and take a look at 
where are we expanding? And is this the right thing for the town overall? Because we don't live in silos. So again, um, I think obviously um, we, need the, we need the housing, but we need to do it responsibly. And again, this is asking for a zone change, which you do not need to approve um, looking at the entire um, project. The, these are concepts, but if that is what is coming, it's nice to know that's what the plans might be, but I would say there's a lot of other history here that you all know you can take into account. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Joseph Campbell. I own a property on uh, 49 and 47 47. Nashville Road. My, my daughter owns 49. Uh, and that is um, um, what, what that road needs is uh, some development on that road because what happens is I try to, I uh, built a house and they denied me a uh, pipe in the brook that's on Nashville Road because of, um, I don't know, political reasons or whatever. Um, I, uh, I, I spent over $20,000 to try to get it approved. And every time I get it approved, I spent lawyers, uh, draftsmen, uh, surveyors, engineers. And the question, the line was, I, they thought that water could go uphill, not downhill. And um, I was denied for that reason. You want to pipe? Pipe the brook. Pipe the brook. I wanted to pipe the brook. Yeah, I wanted to pipe the brook all the way down to to Overlook Park entrance and seal that up. It's it's actually owned by the town, but what happens is the deed shows that it's partly owned by the town of Bethel because of the setback, and uh, so I was gonna. I was, I was, I was, if I wasn't denied, I would have had the, that area in the book sealed up and sidewalks because all the people that walk, and there was a lot of people got hit by cars going down Nashville Road because the right side of Nashville Road can't be walked on because there's a slope on the right side. The only place you can walk is in the road. So, Going back to this situation with the saying that the road should be widened, but the only place it could be widened is where that covered or the brook is now. It should be, you know, the, the town owns it. They don't want to take any responsibility of closing that that covered up and seal it up and make the road wider for, for those reasons. Um, I, I, um, I was denied so, my, when I was building the house, I was denied and it made me financially, uh, it was a problem because I couldn't go any further. Um, I, I would like to, you know, I'm not against you know, some people got to live somewhere. I'm not against them building, you know, there's multi families in that area, two families. There's some, there's some, um, even on my street, there's people that had an in-laws apartment, they passed away and they rented those are out. There's, there's a lot of mixed, uh, you know, family, that are using, you know, their distant properties for, for multifamily use. And, and uh, but m when I built the house, it was a single scenario zone, and I, I like to try to change it to, to, you know, two-family zone. Okay, and uh, that would make make um, things, you know, better for. Uh, the community, I think the whole street should be changed to two family zone because it got 
Quail Run up the street is multifamilies. You got those new developments up there. They're, you know, a large, large houses. And uh, but right now we are uh, we're at catch twenty two about land use with that road because of the narrowness of it. And then then uh, the whole thing should be developed. And um, I had a question for the person across the street from me. I says, he asked me, why is your house up, up a little high? I says, that road will flood and you'll have a nice storm and the road will be a foot of water on it till it crushes that hill to go down there for the road. So it, it's, it's, it's a real, you know, drainage nightmare in that, that street because of the, you know, the look in the pond up the street. When there's a big flushing rain, the, the, catch, the drainage can't take it. And two, two instances, well, I had almost about water up to my driveway just before the doorways. But all those houses in there were flooded out. You know, this. Yeah, poured it down onto South Street. Yeah, they were just flooded out. You know, so um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> These are the angle right in the back of Could you keep your name and address? Jimmy Benora, 49 Chestnut Street. I live right in the back of his building that he has now for state the sheet metal building. And I agree with what with, with Pete said. It's he's very much over over pushed his boundaries on some of this stuff. And if he was to build a 12 family house down there, it's going to make Nashville a complete nightmare. South Street's going to be even worse. Chestnut's going to be backed up. Mike driveway's right on on the corner. So three cars at the stop sign on Chestnut, and I'm, I can't even get out of my driveway. So if he was, if he's building something that big there, I'm never getting out of my driveway when it comes to clean for, for usage, you know, to be able to get to the store or whatever. <laughs> I feel that he's kind of pushing the limits a little bit. I mean, multifamily? Okay, fine, but not 12. My my driveway runs right in the back of his building. And I I feel that he's uh really pushed his limits. So that's all I have to say. Sir, can you spell your last name? M-E. M-E and then O and A. Thank you. Anybody on the Zoom call that from the public that would like to ask? Uh, I don't see anyone with their hands raised at this time, Mr. Chairman, but what I will do uh, kind of as a public service announcement for anyone that has not attended the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting before, um, there is a row of icons at the bottom of the Zoom app. One of the buttons should have uh, an icon of a pair of people that says participants. Clicking that button uh, brings up uh, the attendees for tonight's meeting, and you would click next to your own name uh, or your handle for um, however you chose to enter the meeting. Uh, there will be a button next to that that says to raise your hand. Clicking that button uh, establishes a queue for those who want to offer public comment. I would also add that if you do want to offer public comment, please uh, change your um your name for how you've attended tonight's meeting to reflect your full name. That is your first and last name. Thank you very much. And we'll give a few more seconds, Mr. Chairman. I'm seeing a Diane Ryan. Hi, Diane Ryan, 13 Karen Drive. I had looked at this uh, a few months ago when it was initially on the docket, and I was concerned as well about the traffic issue with that spot. Um, and also the height of the building that would probably be able to be allowed with the new, if you uh, allowed the other zoning to go in. 
um, which would tower over the other homes in the area and really devalue them. And um, so that was my concern even before hearing about uh, the neighbor's concerns and the historic buildings close by. So I would ask you to not um, allow it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on the Zoom call? David, any hands raised? I am not seeing any other hands raised at this time, Mr. Chairman. Any questions? Correspondent. Okay. I have an email from Shani Burke Speck. Um, dear Ms. Cavagna, I'm writing to express our objection to change in zoning to the properties at 22 and 24 Nashville Road. I am the homeowner, homeowner at 26 Nashville Road. We would like this area to remain single family homes. Please do not approve any zoning change that would allow the destruction of the property at 24 Nashville Road. Any high density housing at this location would have a significant impact on our living conditions and the value of our property. Respectfully, Shanice. And she also, um, I also have a picture of the current conditions of 24 Nashville Road that she submitted for the record. Anything else? No, that's it. Sure. Oh, wait, oh, uh, my name is Annie Dino, D-I-N-O. I live at 14 South Street. Um, and where I live is right across the street from um, the back entrance of Carluzzi's. So I can see Carluzzi's if I tilt my head that way. Um, I also agree with the traffic issue. It does get bad every single day. Uh, I, sometimes it's it's impossible for me to make either a right or a left. You know, if you're trying to make a left because all the cars are stacked up. And, um, but one thing I'd also like to know, I know they're continuing to do work on the Carluzzi's area. They're gonna continue to try to increase that. And it's already just the little bit that they've done by adding and moving the liquor store over there. That's already increased the traffic. And my concern is, or a question perhaps is, how much more building is gonna be happening there? Because we have that building, which is probably gonna increase people in the area, added onto this new building, I, I don't think you can dis discount that because obviously you just can't make the space any bigger than it is, that, that corner any bigger than it is. So I think that needs to be taken into consideration um, and that happened first. <laughs> so I think that needs to be taken into consideration first. Um, at least a thought, at least a thought. Um, but I, I can, again, definitely say that the traffic is very, very challenging in that corner during the week. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Anybody else from the public? <laughs> Brian Pinnis, 42 Shelley Road, previous homeowner of 24 Nashville Road, <laughs> property in question, and just wanted to let you guys know um, from a historical significance, uh, it's great. Um, there's tree trunks in the basement that hold up the actual floors of the house. So from an historical aspect, I think it's very important to keep it. Um, and as far as the neighborhood itself, it's great. Walking to downtown, good neighbors. And that's really it. I just wanted to um, let you guys know how great it was to be a previous owner of the property and that it's actually a Bethel icon and it should remain if possible. Your last name again? Yep, A-I-N-A-S. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do any hands on let's that? Go. Uh, let's, why don't we look, give Peter an opportunity to? I'll, I'll be brief. Um, I'm just trying to provide a few responses if I can. Um, as Mr. Wild confirmed, the house is not on any state or federal regis um, register of historic places. It's not in a historic district. Um, it's just, it, it's an old house. I love old houses. I have an old house myself. Um, but it's ultimately the decision of property owners as to what to do with their, their property. Um, so while downtown Bethel has a number of historic homes that are worthy of protection, 
and we all do our best to preserve those when we can. They can't all be preserved. Um, that's how we modernize the world. Um, so I, I, I hate to be blunt about that, but that's the legal framework we're operating in. Um, uh, as noted, I have a historical I'm on Chestnut Street. I go through that intersection every day, so I know exactly what the <laughs> problem is that we're facing. Um, at the point when we have to submit civil drawings and present them to you for consideration for approval, we'll have to have a traffic engineer because I think that's going to be the one question everybody is going to ask. And that traffic engineer will review those intersections, apply the scientific method that the traffic engineers do, and apply the trip generation model to say adding 12 units will do X. And if it's a problem, we'll have to do something to remedy it. But that's really um, something that can be handled at a site plan phase, whether there's any change that needs to be made to that intersection or not. Um, any change would presumably make it better. I, I, I'm confident of that. Um, as for sidewalks, there is a sidewalk directly across the street, and that sidewalk will take you all the way to the train station and uh, crossing various roads. Um, but I also subscribe to the Dick Shannon theory of sidewalks, which is if you build it, they will come. Um, you don't get sidewalks everywhere all at once. You have to go one property at a time. Um, so presumably our property will have a sidewalk in front of it. And when there's a development on the next one down the road, next one down the road. Is it appropriate to have a sidewalk all the way to the corner of Nashville and Chestnut? Probably not, um, given that that essentially is going up to nowhere. But crosswalks, things like that, all help with sidewalks. So our site plan may be good. We have a sidewalk in front of our building, and maybe we'll propose a crosswalk to get across the one in front of Center School. Again, a site plan issue that we're dealing with. As for height, what we proposed in a very preliminary conceptual way is for a two-story building with a relatively steep pitched roof that matches the Victorian style of many homes in Bethel. We'll not tower over anybody um, with a two-story building like that. Um, it will likely be taller than the building that's there, that both the steel building and the residential home. Um, but I don't think towering over it is the right word. Also, as we saw in a lot of these pictures, there's a significant grade change behind the building up to Chestnut Street that will mask any particular height issues. Um, I think that's all the comments we have. Um, what we've proposed to you, even though it is a zone change, a zone map amendment, it utilizes existing zones within the regulations, existing zones directly adjacent to our property and in the vicinity. And so we're trying to work within what the regulations already provide. So we think it's a logical extension of those zones, and we hope that you'll see fit to approve it. Thank you. Question. Good question. I do. Uh, what did you say the acreage on this is? 0. 0.463. Point. Okay, I, 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 I'm looking at this picture, Peter. I'm sorry. And correct me if I'm wrong. Um, this is the front, this is the back. I, I believe that's what you're pointing to. Okay, and there's this <clears throat> large parking lot back here? Yes, parking behind. Okay, parking behind. It, it just, by looking at it, it looks like it's, the acreage is much larger. Um, I, I, I can eight, assure you that we've laid it out on a, on a plot. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you did. Of the property. So. I, I just haven't seen the picture, so. Yeah, and again, we've not done our civil engineering. Yeah. We've just drawn a building and a parking lot and made sure it failed. Okay. Um, eight two bedrooms. Eight two bedrooms, four one bedrooms. Okay. Um, and so you have. That's With current, that big a piece of property and eight two bedrooms, you're going to have children. What, where uh, are they? As I said, we've not done our civil engineering drawings. So, so you're going to be thinking about children and a playground yeah. and green space 
in, in a large area. In anticipation of these exact questions from this exact commissioner. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah I'm sorry. I, um, not my first rodeo with these. <laughs> no, well, with me. <laughs> We've worked together we, for we many, fully, many years. Fully understand that there's a balance between parking, green space, and building footprint. Oh yeah. The two, the two floors of the building. It looks like three. That's the other part. Well, it looks like it, but it's we not. It's just it. locked areas for well, the. What, 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 these are dormers. There's a few loft areas on the upper upper floor units. So it does go three stories in, in this building. Not really three stories, though. <laughs> There's not a dormer. Yeah. But I mean, technically, it's not a three story building. It's a two story building. Let's do that for those. Yeah, no, no, because a lot of this has to do with mm -hmm. what, what, how I'm looking at this and what I'm going to think about it. I, it, it, it to me, it's a bit, it's, it's important. Can I? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm sorry because I know we have some other items on the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um. There's. What, what I would like to do, if I may ask this, I would like this property marked off, so I can go over. I mean, I went over and I did not see this size property. Can it be marked off so I can go walk it myself? What do you mean by marked off? Uh, so I know exactly the, where the property lines are. We could save the corners. Okay, I would appreciate that. Thank you. And then I'll I'll leave everything else for later. Thank you. Yes, I just wanted um, to suggest to the commission to continue the hearing and to go back to your, um, especially your regulations pertaining to the BC, the village district, and the zone, yes. and the TOD zone, especially because we're talking about making a change from the village to the village district overlay, specifically purpose. The village Stop, I need to correct you. Yes. To the village center district. The TOD overlay. The village, village district overlay is something different. Village center. I pulled the wrong one, Peter. Yep. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, uh, the village no. district overlay is intended to provide architectural. Well, the village area. center. I, right. I But the TOD I does that too. I printed the wrong one. I had I that too. too. <laughs> so the TOD does that too, which is why so, I didn't include all three. Okay. Multiple so, so you understand the mistake that I made just copying from the regulations. So we're talking about the village center to the, the mm -hmm. with the TOD overlay. Okay. So that's number one. And that's very good that I, I'm glad that I made the mistake just to bring it to your attention to review that going forward. The second part of that is that I think it is a little bit more complicated than as presented because uh, I believe that there is some positive effectiveness to changing the present commercial use, which is located at 22 Nashville mm -hmm. Road to bring it more into that transitional phase to the single family residential homes located along that way. Mm -hmm. So I would look at both properties, even though they, mm -hmm. the proposal is for a joint venture of both properties, look at the regulations and the changes pertaining to TOD and the opportunities that would exist for each individual property based on the zoning, either present or what is proposed. Mm -hmm. And I would continue this to the next meeting. Okay. So with that, uh, we will continue this to our next meeting on June the 13th. Mr. Chairman, can I ask if other commission members have comments before you? I'm sorry. I think before you cut everybody off? Nope, I thought you would like to know. <laughs> True. Bob, any questions? Uh, I have one question. We're talking about tearing all the buildings down on that property? Yes. Just the house? <laughs> we have to. <laughs> yes, the steel building as well as the house, and there's a garage too, right? Yeah, Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a garage yeah. and a garage. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the brick building. No, that's no, not on brick. this property. No, that's right. no, it's not on the property. Okay. That's where it stops, right? No, the pipe. <laughs> on pipe and guns and It's not ours either. That's right. That's it. All right. Thank you, Bob. Doug, anything from you? No, sir. Thank you. Ten. Ten or penny. They both said no. Oh, they both said sorry. Okay. Okay. So, thank you. Like we continue this to uh, June the 13th, 2023. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry. What date? 13th. 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 
the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next on the agenda is our business meeting. Has everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes? Just sleep. Just sleep. He's going to take out. No, no. I'm sorry. Uh, I have just uh, one correction. I was present for the meeting, but not seated. Okay. I was also just and um, for the record, I'm going to seat you for Paul Shanley this evening. That's Rob Wallace for Paul Shanley. Yeah. I'm and, just saying it louder so it picks okay. up on the mic. And um, <laughs> Doug Cooney for yeah. Rich Tibbetts. Thank you. He was. <laughs> We're going to see uh, Doug all, Cooney for Rich Tibbetts, who isn't present. You all have long days. Long hours at work, I understand. Please don't, you know, it's all to help you. So, <laughs> minutes, has everybody had an opportunity to review them? Yeah. Yes. Which ones do you have? Okay. Okay. Oh, I just said that um, it doesn't show me being present. Right. So. Oh. Yeah. And we have to, um, at the very bottom, um, when it says emotion to journey, it says Paul Shambler, it's Paul Shanley. Okay. What's that name? Thank you. Any other changes? Do we have a motion to approve as amended? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Bob. Do we have any invoices, Nancy? No, we paid them oh. all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Last, yeah. Oh, we'll have more. <laughs> Next on the agenda is our work session. Um, First item is Frank and Judith Saunders 830B affordable housing application for 17 Whitney Road, um, 42 units. Um, yes, Mr. Chairman, I just want to note for the record that all I've done is made copies of the draft resolution in a hard copy format along with the exhibit. So you have them here this evening to go through any revisions that you may want to amend, discuss. Uh, don't, okay, don't mix it up because there are some minor typographics. Uh, Attorney Andrus is here. Also, if you have any discussion during your discussion, any concerns, or uh, maybe you just want to go through with them how this was put together, sir, um, based on their comments. So we've all had an opportunity to read it. Yes. 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 Questions, discussion points. No questions. Chuck, you want to go ahead? Sure, absolutely. Chuck Andrews, Attorney for the Commission, and Chair Ware. Uh, you had a deliberation session at the last time. We went through the, the evidence that was presented at the public hearing. Uh, one of the points that was, um, as, as you're aware, this is an 830G application. You've been aware of that. That's a special burden of proof. And the consensus of the Commission was that the the dust complaints by the Saunders themselves was a substantial public interest in health and safety that you can reasonably consider. And that um, was something that uh, you, you directed us to draft a resolution um, with regard to that, that that was a substantial public interest that clearly outweighed the need for affordable housing. And there was some question as to whether that could be addressed by conditions or not. The way that we drafted this is that because that, that we you had you know suggested alternatives uh and during during the hearing itself said some alternative plans that needed some more landscaping we put that in there but you, you couldn't just approve that because that was such a that's a, a redesign of the project so it typically when you approve something with conditions you you know you add some additional landscaping at this spot or a fence here or that this was an entire redesign so the way it was drafted that it couldn't be addressed by reasonable conditions, but we did provide the alternative to them and it, with a conceptual plan uh, with the additional landscaping to give them direction uh, because that is what the commission desired to do. You're trying to work with developers for any affordable housing type of application. So that was the basic uh, idea and, and it just sort of re reviewed the evidence that we've discussed at the last session. There were a few, I think, uh, some a couple of questions and typos that we can go through. Yes, please. Uh, that's, they're draft. Okay. The so. first one, I believe, is on page two. Um, the second paragraph should read 
about three sentences down. Uh, the complaints have been persistent since the use was approved. The first complaint in June two thousand four. Mm -hmm. And and similarly, earlier on the page, the second line of the page again, it, yes, that should be two thousand four instead of two thousand five. Again, that was the original date of the approval. And then on page three, uh, again uh, under E, the last sentence in that section, the commission deliberated on this application at its meeting on May 9th and May twenty third and adopted this memorandum and its decision at its meeting on May 23rd. So correction, everything. Correction, it's just dates. Yeah. And these things I wanna take care of first if we can. Yeah. And then um, if you have any um, thing that you wish to add. I'm up to page nine, Chuck, are you there? Yeah, I have no other changes in the okay. memorandum. There were some, I had some questions on the exhibits. Yes. Right. No, we'll let them go. Okay, that was all I had after discussing this with you right. individually. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Chuck, did you have some additions on it? On the, on the exhibits, there were some, again, you got that packet that, that was compiled by the zoning office, a uh, record of the complaints by the founders and investigation and for references to the BEP. And I think there's a police report in there too. Please report, yep. But it, there was one uh, undated letter, which I'm from the sequence, it, it was after 2018 based on that, but we couldn't. We, I couldn't give the exact date. It wasn't dated on the record, but it follows the chain of circumstances that follow. Right. So I, I was wondering, could we find that? Apparently, to be honest, we couldn't. So, mm -hmm. so, but it, that that's where it appears to be in the sequence. So that was on, that was on page seven of exhibit A, where there's a big, a big question mark as a date. So we'll just leave that as it is. And then similarly on page eight, there was a phone message dated nine twelve, <laughs> and we don't know the year of that. That it's it's um uh from from again the sequence it's probably 21 and yeah the, okay so you you did you take that message you think, yeah okay so you, I, i'm i'm thinking it's it's 20 sorry 20 19 right it makes sense right because it um it's similar to the yeah, other time yeah so and those were all messages that the ones the 20 things were in my message book right nine, the 920, the 1020, the 421, they were all from my book. Right. So they would be in sequence. Right. So so that that makes sense. That that date then on page eight, that we believe it's likely it's 912, 2020. And then um I think that that's it I had for the uh, corrections. Any further discussion? Mission. What? Any further discussion? No. no. Yeah. And it, just for the record, we did circulate. I think it's now a Tuesday, and it was sent out on on Friday. I think so. You, you yeah. Mm -hmm. or, Beth, when did it send it to the commissioners? I believe it was Saturday. Uh, Saturday. Mm -hmm. So you've had a number of days. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not just, we're just we yeah. had yeah. a chance to review it. So and I have spoken to several commission members individually. Right. Okay. At their request. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just so you. Yeah. This is you have Bob, questions, comments? Uh, comment. Uh, since we're using the, the fugitive dust as, as the main topic here of uh, what uh, decision we're going to make, have, have we actually drawn a line in the sand that says that when it did go away or it didn't go away? or Sure. Um, and it will well, go away. Uh, that that's that's one of the points is that it hasn't gone away. <laughs> um, that th it's been some seventeen years, and and there were periods during that time there was a, like from twenty thirteen to twenty fifteen where there were no record of complaints. Doesn't mean it didn't happen, but we have complaints up to uh, twenty twenty one. So it's uh, as far as we know, uh, it's still the the situation has been remedied. 
the applicant did say in the record, oh, I think the sprinkler system has solved it, but the sprinkler system has been in place since 2007. And it hasn't solved it, and we don't even think enough time. So, so that that is the that, that is why the suggestion for further development requires additional remediation in terms of the screening and moving the things away and so forth. <laughs> that remediation would be off Galt property, but onto Saunders property. Is that true? Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Just so everybody's aware of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Doug, any comments, questions, discussion points? No, sir. Okay. I mean, I think that's an important point because they're going to be building these balconies off the back and that they're right on top of each other. We don't have that 25 foot that they would have on the other side. Correct. So I, I think that makes it a very important issue. Right. The health director made that point. Right. Exactly. That, uh, Lauren. Okay. Yeah, it was it was excellent. Yes. All right, Chuck. One more question. Sure, Bob. Is it, is it up to us to to prove that our recommended plan would make this whole situation better, or, or do we have to take that for granted? Well, that that's the assumption. What what we're trying to do is remember the burden of proof. We have to show substantial public interest clearly outweighs the need for affordable housing and cannot be addressed by reasonable conditions. And again, it's also clear we don't have to design the plan. So by giving the recommendations, you're doing two things. Number one, you're acting consistently as you've done with other affordable housing. And even with this particular applicant, you're giving recommendations. You're not saying you can't build anything on the property. You're saying, yes, we can. This is this is how we think you can do it and address those public safety issues. That's what you're doing, you know, number one. And number two, I think you're also uh, conforming with the spirit of 830G itself, particularly that element of trying to give them some guidance as, as to how to move forward if you want to pursuing a multifamily uh, proposal for this property. So we're, we're with our denial, or if it becomes a denial, we're we're showing the, in good faith that we're trying to work with this developer. That's correct. Right? Correct. That's exactly. You feel that. The big point. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. Okay, that's all. Thank you, Bob. So motion. Um, just a quick question. Oh, sure. So we we approve, we agree. This goes to the applicant. Next steps. That's up to the applicant. There's they could do uh, three things. Number one, they could do nothing in case it's our decision, and they could let it sit uh, and maybe reapply in the future. Number two, they do have a process under 830G of reapplying without taking an appeal with mm -hmm. a, an amendment. So they do, and we mentioned that in the conclusion. Mm -hmm. So they could do, possibly do that and perhaps come in. We've given them some suggestions. For number three, they could just appeal this straightly. They could just mm -hmm. say, I'm gonna appeal. I'm not gonna use that provision, but I think you're you're wrong and I'm gonna go to court with you right now. Mm -hmm. So those are basically your three options. Okay. Good point, Penny. Curiosity. Sure. Yeah. I, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt this draft memorandum of decision for Saunders 830G application, 17 Whitney Road. Uh, what I'll do is read the first paragraph and the last paragraph. Um, <clears throat> the Bethel Planning and Zoning Commission adopts this memorandum of decision as its collective statement of reasons concerning the site plan application filed by Frank and Judy Saunders, Saunders or the applicants, pursuant to Connecticut General Statute 830G for a 42 unit apartment building at 17 Whitney Road. And the conclusion of the nine pages is for all the foregoing reasons, the application is denied. As noted above, the commission has recommended an alternative development that it believes would address the fugitive dust issues while also providing for affordable housing on the site. Such a proposal, however, involves a substantial redesign and thus cannot be realistically addressed by conditions of approval. We recommend, however, that the applicants use the resubmission process under Connecticut General Statute Section 830GH or file a new application with a proper 
with a proposal consistent with suggestions if they wish to pursue the matter further. Second. All in favor? Uh, I'd, like a, I'd like a roll call, please. Hand. Yes. Penny. Penny Kessler, yes. Kitty Grant, yes. No, I was sitting over here in the chair. Bob. Bob Lignard, yes. Doug. Doug Cuny, yes. yes. Thank you. And could you please mute the folks who are talking? Yes. Is David. I don't know. This uh, I, I, I'm not sure where this background noise is coming from, Mr. Chairman. My apologies. I'm not hearing you. So. All commission members have voted in favor of the motion. So, so moved. No. <clears throat> Can you vote in favor as well? You vote. I voted yeah. in favor. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Question, Ken. Well, what's going on? Wait. Can we just... Does Hold that on. have an effective date? Hold on a second, please. But they're in the middle of finalizing the vote. Yes. Ken Stevens votes in favor. And so, I did. I hear you. Did you say the motion passed? Yes. Unanimously. Yes. Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure that was clear for the okay. record. Bob, uh, the effective date is now, you, you have to set an effective date when you do an amendment to the do. regulations, but you don't have to do that when you're just no. approving or denying a, a Okay, act. I just want to make sure we dot all the I's. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you. very Bye. much. Bye. Bye. Next item on the agenda, Steiner, Steiner Inc. Route 6 to DCD overlay zone, site plan, special permit, 22 single family units, Benedict Road, 8, 9, 10, and 17, and Millbrook Road. Okay, this is at the work section. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so I would like to just say thank you. Um, very involved in all the meeting. I didn't get this in our work session. And I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a very beautiful subdivision laid out well, and I'm, I'm in favor of it. And I think we should make a resolution. Myself. It's not my favorite type of development, but uh, I see nothing wrong with it that would prevent us from accepting. Okay, comments? Almost said. I think it's it, it's it's good, and it it actually is kind of one of the favorites. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've we we we. <laughs> okay, any comments? Yeah, it's good. Bob? No comment. Doug? I agree. Very respectful of the property in the uh, neighborhood, and it's, uh, it's well done. Um, I, I would agree. I think it's well planned, it's well laid out, um, well thought through. Um, you want to say something? Yes, yeah, so I'd like to make a motion to have uh, Beth uh, run, write up a resolution for our next meeting. Or can Yes. Okay. That's okay. Second. Roll call, Bob. In favor? In favor. Yes. Doug? Doug Cuny in favor. Ken? Kenny Parsons in favor. Penny Kessler in favor. Ken Stevens in favor. Kitty Grant in favor. Bob Wallace in favor. Motion passed unanimously. Okay. That's sweet. 13th will be a big night. <laughs> A lot of stuff going. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Beth, any staff report? Besides being busy. Um, it's very interesting the way we are, we are extremely busy. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you will have a busy summer. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to it. Okay. Beth, could you set it again? I said we're very busy and you're gonna have a very busy summer. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other comments from the commission? Yeah, me. Um, I would like to ask the commission, do you ever look at the uh, I don't know if you get the news times, but do you ever look at the uh the editorial page? Nope. Okay, so uh for the last year and a half, uh there have been quite a few op ads, and I couldn't find the exact editorial they wrote in, um, I believe it was January or February. Couldn't find it. But there was one today, or yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, yes. Hold on. No, Saturday. That literally curled my hair. And it was written by a developer. What was that, Kenny? It was, um, pardon? What was the title? Oh, uh, anti housing groups are holding the state back. 
And in it, it specifically, it was, this was written by a uh, developer in New Canaan. And it specifically talks about, in fact, zoning was created for the very pur purpose of ra ra racial and ethnic exclusion. Along the way, of course, zoning rationales were developed and, and used to support the reason for its inception and continued practice. I, I really think you should look at these once in a while because there have been many of these and they are all negative toward the uh, to commission. And I, I've been on this commission in 30 years and I, I would like to compliment a lot, all the commission members I've worked with because everybody has always worked together as a unit I've never heard my party, your party, but no, and I'm serious. And I, I've always seen people coming together for the betterment of this town. And when I see things like this in the paper and, and using the language they're now using, I, I find it very upsetting. And I think you ought to be aware of what it is that's going on and what it is that people are reading and, and perhaps thinking of us in these terms. And I, 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 it just, it blew me away. I, I saw Beth uh, Saturday uh, at, uh, or was it for Sunday, at Bethel, uh, excuse me, Big Wine. And I said, you have to go online and read this. It's, and it's, it's been one of many. So I really think you should be aware and, and know what is being said. So thank you. Yeah, I, I read a lot. I track a lot of the stuff in these months. <laughs> well, but it's, that, that's why I still get it. Because, you just answered why we don't read it. Yeah, but but this is why I do because I think it's important to know what it is that's being said about these commissions, and I think that's very important. It's important to keep doing what's good for your town. Thank you, but we'll, we'll keep doing that. So I want to jump in here. Sure. Um, we are one of the only houses on our block, several blocks, to receive paper copies of the newspapers. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> the only one we don't get is Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Um, we get the News Times and we get the New York Times. Um, Kitty, Bethel is, there's a very fancy schmancy expression it's called sui generis, which means unique. Bethel itself is extraordinarily unique in its planning and zoning commission. All right. For the most part, in and we can look at the Gold Coast towns and we can look at mm -hmm. some of the towns that that gentleman was talking about, zoning regulations were indeed put into place to prevent certain demographic groups from coming into the town. I will tell you that I lived in Brooklyn and I was in the only neighborhood in Brooklyn that had no Jews. My grandfather, what can I tell you? And my mother reported in the subways that as buildings were being put up, she was she lived in there really from the 30s until she died in 93. In the subways, as, as apartments were going up, there were signs all over the subways talking about these new buildings and these new apartment buildings, and they were restricted. Yeah. That was the word, restricted. And what that yeah. meant for our neighborhood was no Jews, no Italians, no Catholics, and maybe no Irish unless maybe. Um, so I think that, I think that when we read things like this gentleman, I think that I think we have to remember that Bethel is not a community that he's talking about. He's talking about in general, and at some point, you know, we all know about redlining, and we all know about this. We we are different, and we always have been, which is part of what makes this planning and zoning commission amazing. But that's not the way it is in a lot of towns. But you see, I'm taking it personally because I, I, as I said, I've been on this commission so many years. And I have with, with Beth, with Nancy, with Steve Palmer before us, with so many, Bob, so many commission members, 
we have worked on affordable housing to make sure, I, un, unlike all the towns around us, our affordable housing numbers are cute we're, and we're not a city. And so I'm extremely proud of the work we have all worked and accomplished. And so that's why when I see this, I really can't understand. <laughs> I go, people, this is simple. We work hard here. And I think I think we should know what is going on. And Absolutely. So that is who I am and why I am. And I will tell you the first pages I go to it. I was born in the author, so hello. The opinion, editorial, um, obituary, and then the comics and the, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's as far as I get. Yeah. Um, Okay, well, thank you. I, I get it. I hear you. No, I, and I'm just very proud of everybody. Okay. So. Any other comments from the commission? Bob, did you Bob. want to say something, buddy? I'll, I'll tell a similar story to, to, to Penny there. In 1960, I played a round of golf with Jackie Robinson on a public golf course in Stanford <laughs> where they wouldn't let him join any of the clubs in Greenwich, New Canaan, yeah. any of those towns around. Yeah. And, and we asked him why. And he says, they don't want me there. Yeah. Sure. But they haven't changed then. Some of those towns are still the same. You have a hand raised in the, in the public. Yeah. Oh, who's that? Hey, folks. It's Nika. Good evening. Yeah. She's a member of the commission. Oh. I have I'm, I'm just getting ready to open it to the public. So just give us a moment if you would, please, Nicholas. Oh, sure. Yeah, I wanted to just chime in on what Kitty said. No, okay, no, then just no. a moment. Hold on, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, the commission sure. comments, are we finished with the yeah. commission comments? Yeah. So. Public comments, anybody wish to make a comment? Nicholas? Oh, yeah, hey, I was just going to say, I, I hear what you said. Name, and, name okay. and address, please. Oh, Nicholas Jordan, 24 Wolf Pits Road, Bethel. And, um, yeah, just to that it's great to know what's going on, I think, and to gauge, you know, the the temperature of the community and to just know as much as we can. But that I think it's also important that we, you know, for the commission, you guys are doing such a good job. And like you said, um, like have been for a long time. And and I think it shows, but also that so my point is to maybe to just not take it personally. Um, you know what? those things what other people are saying necessarily in editorials like that because it doesn't necessarily reflect on what each of you does every day you know and the decisions that we make as, as a team as a community um and that's coming from their point of view their perspective and that's valid okay mm -hmm. um and that's all just to know what's going on is great and to make sure you guys we don't you and we and don't take it personally and just keep doing what we do and do as good as we can, as well as we can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Um, New St. Germain. Mm, sorry, Allison St. Germain, 14 Elgin Ave. Quick question, because I know I may have missed a meeting at one point, but there were the TOD amendments and the pieces that couldn't get discussed because they hadn't been submitted um, to the newspaper for public. And so where are we at with those TOD amendment changes? And I know that there was a public hearing for one of them, but then the other one had to get extended. So where are we at? So that way the public knows when they need to- I would again. say that the TOD, um, when the, any anytime the commission initiates um, a change or is reviewing changes, that they have an unlimited amount of time in order to make any kind of decisions. And with some of the pressing matters that um, they had before them, it was the best, my best advice to them was to let's not pursue this until we have um, some conclusions. And so that will get communicated to the public because when they're ready to pick it up again, it will okay. definitely. We'll see on the but not at this point. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Any other comments from the public? Oh, before I forget yep. though, let me can I address sure. one other thing? Sure. Oh, Allison, so I apologize. I'm sorry. I, I just to, to address, just to let you know that even though the commission doesn't have it in front of them, the one of the th things that we've been working on is the possibility of dividing um, the TOD zone into two zones, one residential, one strictly residential, um, taking into consideration the other underlying zones that we have and the other, the true TOD. 
and that's that takes a little bit more time. Thank you. So, motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We need to call everyone. Aye. <laughs> Aye. 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 Aye.